How you guys doing today? Sterling Smith with Loot and Booty Barbecue. And I'm Chef John with Chef John's Events and Catering. We're here with Green Mountain Grills and we're gonna do some recipes for you. And today, we got these beautiful cowboy ribeye steaks. Look at these. Those stuff. are absolutely awesome. They're beautiful, great marbling in them. We've got a uh, bone in, I really love that bone in, some nice flavor. When you're doing your catering for customers, is there anything you look for certain in a Yeah, I do actually. Um, I actually look for a beautiful marbling on it. Um, kind of a nice red burgundy color, if you will. Um, I'm looking for freshness. If it doesn't smell right and it's too dark, step away. Absolutely. But I also look for a, a grass-fed beef. Okay. I think that's really important. Great. And Different flavor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think the bone, too, being there makes just a huge difference in the cooking process. Right. Um, I mean, what do you think about that? I really like the bone in. I've done bone in and bone out. I like the bone in, especially when they have these together and the bone is the oh, whole the bone. Tomahawk. You got the tomahawk oh, steaks. That's this really popular. The, exactly. Very popular. And this is basically a tomahawk with the bone cut a little bit shorter. Uh, so we're going to get these up and we're going to do a take today on a steak au poivre. Awesome. Basically with peppercorns crusted in there with cognac sauce. But I'm going to do a little bit different. I have a sea salt, peppercorn, garlic rub. We're going to crust on the outside. We're gonna get it on the Green Mountain Grill at 400 degrees. Awesome. Some grill grates, so we're gonna get some nice cross So kind of the hotter the better, if you will. I like hot with beef, actually, and I like my steak medium to medium rare. You know, 120, I'm a medium 125. Rare guy. Exactly. I think that's the way beef needs to be cooked. Oh, yeah, it's better flavor. If I may, you know, absolutely. If you ordered any more than medium. It's time to order the chicken. Get Sorry. a hamburger, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but these are beautiful steaks. We got these today. We're going to get them on, get some crosshatch on, and we're going to do a gorgonzola cream sauce oh. to go over the, mm, the awesome. top of these. So I'm ready to learn some of your chef techniques. Help me with this yeah. cream sauce. And you ready to get these seasoned up? Yeah, let's do Perfect. it. Perfect. Well, we're going to take this rub. This is a sea salt, peppercorn, and garlic rub. And we're just going to do a nice crust on the outside of this. I like to get it into all the crevices, all the cracks, get that pushed in a little bit. And uh, when I'm cooking beef, uh, what about you, Chef? I usually like to keep my steaks out maybe an hour, two hours before yeah. you get them on. I like them to come up in room temperature a little bit. Yeah, don't don't be afraid to do the room temperature thing. Uh, it's not gonna damage, no unusual bacteria is gonna grow on your beef. Most of the best steak houses in the country, all their beef is sitting out room temperature. It actually cooks a lot evener uh, because you don't have that coldness. Because what you're trying to do when it's cold because you're actually trying to heat this thing, right? And then it gets real tough and chewy. Exactly. Not a, not a good mix. So bringing it up to room temperature allows the proteins and the muscles to relax a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Uh, have more even cook, and I think the flavor is uh, it adds a lot more flavor to the meat, and I think the meat is actually like you said more tender that way. So we got a beautiful crust on these. Now, when you're seasoning meat also, do you like to season it and let it sit for a little bit, or do you season it and take it straight to the grill or smoker? I actually season it, let it sit. Not very long, but yeah. long enough so that the flavor starts to infuse a little bit in the definitely. meat. But definitely, I think the heat of the grill is important because it's going to infuse that flavor and kind of lock it inside. Kind of like what we did with the turkey breast a little bit earlier, exactly. where we put it on when it's hot. Creating that crust, like, too. Yeah. yeah. And that's going to seal all the juices in and the moisture. I like to put my seasoning on. And what I do in competitions is I usually put my seasonings on about an hour before the meat goes on. And what that does is allow the pores to open up in the meat and accept all the salt and all the flavors that I'm getting in my seasoning. So my question is, for those that are, are grill hounds, if you will, yes. Um, how many different meats can you do at room temperature before how, cooking? How, how many? many different styles, like what type, like a pork, or can you do something else like that? In competition barbecue, there's four meats. There's okay. chicken, pork ribs, pork shoulder, and beef brisket. And all four of those meats, whenever I put them on the grill, I have them sitting out at least an hour and season them right at least an hour. So kind Sometimes of the, it works the same way, so it gives that real nice flavor. And I think that a lot of people don't understand how that flavor comes, and they go and try and recreate it at home. Right. And they're like, I can't figure it out. Why isn't it working? So this is a great example as to why. Absolutely. So what we have, we have these seasoned up. We're going to let these sit about 30 minutes, put them right on the grill grates, ready to go. Awesome. All right, chef, these have been sitting for about a half an hour. We got the salt and the pepper and the garlic crusted into it, uh, creating some nice flavor. We're gonna take them over to the smoker right now. It's sitting at 450 degrees, and we're gonna put them on the grill grates. And what we're gonna do with this size of steak, these are pretty thick. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're gonna do about uh, five minutes, and then after about five minutes, we're gonna give them a 90 degree turn. So we get some nice cross hatches. So kind of like what they would see in a restaurant. Absolutely. And you can do this at home too. But most people, when they don't buy a steak this size. So if you have a smaller, what we may call a traditional steak, right. you're going to be about two minutes and then make that turn and you'll get that beautiful hash bar. Perfect. And these but are really nice. got to be hot. That's Absolutely. the key. So let's take these over and let's get them on. So we're at 450 degrees. 
you see the grill grate set up. We should have some nice, oh, do you hear that sizzle? Oh, that's that, awesome. That sizzle's what we're looking for. That sound means all that meat and the crust and the seasoning. We're gonna get into everything. So we're gonna put them just like this. In five minutes, we're gonna come back, give them a 90 degree turn. Awesome. Ready, chef? Let's do this. So now what we're gonna do is put together the cream sauce for the uh, the gorgonzola cream sauce. Oh, on that's gonna go, uh, you know. And you're you're a professional chef, so I'm gonna let you roll with this. Yeah, you know? absolutely, absolutely. What what so, we're gonna do is take this uh, cream and we're gonna reduce it by half. I usually do about a cup and a half. We're gonna get that going, but the first what we want to do is get some butter and the garlic going. And uh, I know you absolutely. can saute some butter in there. So most people don't think that cheese goes with steak. Oh no, but absolutely. I gotta tell you, those uh, more pungent steaks. Um, definitely. So we're going to get a hot pan. We're going to melt our butter. If you don't want the butter to burn, lift it up off the flame. Maybe add a little bit of olive oil. Absolutely. But the browning effect is going to give a real nice rich flavor oh, as perfect, well. Perfect. Uh, brown butter is, to most people, what they consider burnt. Right. It's not. It's really just a real deep uh, smoky flavor. Flavor, well. actually. All the flavors come out in the butter once you get it going and get the exactly. that brown butter. And adding that garlic to it, it's gonna add some nice uh, pop to that cream sauce. Oh, yeah, it's not absolutely. just gonna be cheesy and creamy, we're gonna add some nice little flavors in there as well. So the first thing we do. Over saute the garlic because if you do then that's gonna get a real bitter taste. Right. So most people throw it in, they walk away, they get distracted, they look at a text message. You don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure you're paying attention because you don't want that bitter flavor. Exactly. You just want it to 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 just uh, soften it up a little you bit. You can and actually get smell it if you can smell it right now. I mean Perfect. It's a beautiful smell. So we're gonna go ahead and add our cream. We're going to do about two cups. Approximately, yeah. And always go local if you can. This is uh, slow pasteurized milk from a local dairy. Perfect. Uh, so supporting local, like dancing dairies, which this is. Local business. Um, is awesome. We're just going to reduce the heat just a little bit since it's already bubbling. And this is going to reduce by half. Perfect. All right, chef, the steaks have been on for about five minutes. We're going to check them out right now. Oh, man, that smell that's coming through oh, is awesome. That is amazing. What we want to do is look at the bottom see what kind of marks, oh, marks that's we have. Beautiful. Looking good. We're going to turn these 90 degrees just like that. We're going to get another cross hatch on this side. Beautiful sizzle still when exactly. you hear that. So and we're going to let that go another five minutes. And then we're going to check it, flip them over if they're right, and do another cross hatch awesome. five minutes on each side. How long total do you think this is going to take? For these size steaks, we're going to look about 20 minutes. For smaller, I like to go about seven, eight minutes, depending on the right. thickness of the steak. Absolutely. Been about five minutes to get this reduced to half. You notice it's got a nice bubbly in it. Yeah, it looks so awesome. We're gonna finish this sauce. We're gonna add a little pecorino, romano cheese. We're just gonna grate some off in here. Probably looking for about so. Uh, what would you say, chef? How much uh, you two, three tablespoons. Yeah, exactly. About the same. And this is gonna add some nice saltiness to this cream sauce as well. It's gonna go great with that garlic. Having Think that nice microplane grater too, like you've got in your hands, is a lot easier to handle than one of those big exactly. old-fashioned knuckle busters. I think that's about two tablespoons right there, you think? I think that's good, okay, absolutely. Perfect. So we'll give that a stir, let that cheese start to melt. And that's, uh, that, that sharpness from the cheese is gonna come through in that cream sauce. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be great, pair great with that steak You as won't well. need to add really any salt unless you really like salt a lot. Um, you can add a touch if you'd like. If you want a little more peppery flavor, you can actually add a little pepper. Right. It'd be awesome. If you really want to take it to another new height too, you know, you talked about a cognac sauce earlier right, too. Absolutely. If you're into that, add some cognac. We're going to go ahead and add some of that gorgonzola. The gorgonzola is not as pungent as a blue cheese, so you can actually go nice. I mean, probably another two tablespoons. Two tablespoons? I mean, I like personally, I would kind of do four, but that's me. You like that, uh, oh, that yeah. sharpness of that cheese, that bite. And I'm the same way. I do like some of it. I know sometimes it can be overbearing, so, you know, Growing up, my mom always said, you can always add to but you can't take away. That's very true. You can always add mm -hmm. to it, can't take away. You know, um, this pungency, most people would make a compound butter. This is a much easier uh, direction to go. Compound butters are taking butter, melting it, adding the cheeses in, right. and then rolling it up in plastic wrap, sticking it in the fridge, hoping it holds, harden up. hardens up. This is an easier process, and it creates a nice, beautiful sauce. We're gonna let this just simmer and finish. Keep exactly. it warm until it's time to serve. Looks great. Awesome. Thanks, Chef. You bet. Steaks have been on for about another five minutes when we did the 90 degree of So we're at 10 minutes total. Right exactly. Now. So what we're going to do now is just flip these over. We want to start getting that other side. You can see the nice caramelization is starting to happen. That's from awesome. Grill grates. The seasoning sets in. They look beautiful. So we're going to flip them over just like that. Let them go another five minutes. Check them. We're going to turn them another 90 degrees. Let them go another five minutes. We're going to check them. And hopefully they'll be ready to come beautiful, off the rest. Medium rare. Medium rare. Awesome. Awesome.
So Chef, these have been on for another five minutes. They're looking awesome. They look great. We're gonna give it one last 90 degree turn to get that cross hatch. Give it three to four minutes. They should be around 120. 125 oh, yeah. degrees, right where you like it. 120 we'll is like a soft medium rare. Perfect. That 125 is a perfect medium rare. Exactly. So anywhere in that range is what I'm looking for. Now, pros, we actually do it by touch. Right. A lot of amateurs out there, not you, <laughs> <laughs> they actually will do it with a thermometer. Exactly. And the thermometer is fine. Just don't overstab it because you can let all those nice natural juices out of the steak. Exactly. Don't probe it three or four now, or five times. Can I ask a question? Sure. When we take this off, should we let it rest or should we go right to plate and eat? What I usually do, and in competition, I like to let all my meat rest, especially bigger pieces of meat. I think they need more time. So anywhere from 10 to 15, sometimes on a steak, 10 to 15 minutes. When I'm doing a big brisket for competition, I let that thing rest for two, three hours sometimes. So does that like, that just lets that muscle just relax? Exactly. All the natural juices flow through? The muscles, the proteins, the meats have been getting barraged with all this heat for X amount of time. And what it needs is just to relax a little bit. And when those muscles and those proteins relax, they retain a lot more of their moisture. And that's true. Exactly. That's very true. So, these uh, steaks have been on for another three to four minutes on this side. You can see the cross. Oh man, look at that caramel. That is gorgeous. Them. What we want to do now is just take them off to rest a little bit. I like to rest all my meats, especially some steak. Uh, it allows the juices and the flavor to stay in. Absolutely. So a little trick I like to do is when I'm resting, especially steak, I like to take a little bit of butter. Oh, just a little. Oh, butter makes amazing. everything better, right? Absolutely. Kind of like bacon. I like bacon and butter, man. You can't go wrong with those two. I'm going to do just a little slab on top. And then what I like to do is uh, take foil, just put a little bit of uh, loosely, not too tight, yeah. just set it just like that. We're going to let those set for about five, ten minutes. We're going to come back after that butter's melted oh, everything. Oh, that's going to be amazing. we do some nice and slices. all that juice is going to go into the uh, meat. Oh, it's going to be awesome. I can't it, wait. It creates its all jus. I'm drooling. <laughs> it's actually creating its all jus. So some of those juices are going to come out. The butter's going to mix with them. You can take those slices and take that au jus. But we also have that gorgonzola cream oh, sauce that we're going to put That's going to well. make it even better. Definitely. So here we are, we have these beautiful cowboy steaks. They've been on the smoker for 10 minutes each side. We rested them for about five, 10 minutes with some nice butter on it. It's time to slice this thing up. Or you can eat it like a caveman. I Take know. it by the handle and go to town. Ah. <laughs> Pass it around for some friends. What I like to do when I'm cutting this thing up is take this ribeye cap off for the spinalis. I think this is the best cut of the whole oh, cow. Yeah. Tender, juicy, the marbling in this is amazing, but the, the flavor it's gonna get is, is beautiful. And look at that, look how it's done. Oh, that's gorgeous. Nice, what I'll do is, there is a membrane in there between the two uh, muscle groups. So I'm gonna cut a little bit of that membrane off, and I'm gonna come and do some nice little slices of that. You can see that redness oh, in there. Oh, that's gorgeous. Medium that rare. absolutely stunning. You got some of that crust on the outside, and this little bite right here is just beautiful. And it's creating pretty much, and cutting some nice little medallions uh, right here. And I'm gonna put them on the plate, just like that. How's that look, Chef? That is awesome. That's actually a perfect medium rare right there. What uh, I do for the rest of this, sorry, Chef. No, 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 no that's take fine. take the bone off. That's a good gnaw. gnaw. On exactly. That. I might gnaw on that right exactly. now. Exactly. And then we're going to take this, uh, the, the middle of that uh, ribeye, cut it just like that. And look at that beautiful medium rare. You know, some people think that what you see on the cutting board is the blood of the meat. There is no blood in this raw meat, in any raw meat that you buy, excuse me, this is cooked meat, but there is no blood either before or after it's cooked. What you're seeing is the actual natural juices that come out from the meat while it's cooked. Right. So please don't freak out. It's not blood. It's actually the juice from the meat. And it's beautiful, and I, I like it cooked just like that. Oh, yeah. That's so I, perfect I, medium rare right there. It's tender. It has a great mouthfeel. It's not overdone. It's not rubbery. Right. And uh, this is exactly what we're looking for on these steaks. Now, if you want to ladle some of that gorgonzola cheese sauce, oh, yeah. Absolutely. right over the top of that. And that cheese sauce, we, like I said, we had heavy cream in there. First, we started with some butter and garlic and we rendered that down. We added heavy cream and reduced it by half. And then we added some uh, pecorino and some oh, romano yeah. cheese and then some of that gorgonzola. And it's gonna create a great flavor for that steak. I have either. to admit, I tasted it. It's totally awesome. I can't <laughs> wait to try it together. Well, here we are. This is the finished product. Uh, ribeye cowboy steak. We have some of this gorgonzola cheese sauce on it. Help yourself, chef. Awesome, what you let's think. do this. Here we go. Fingers are allowed here. Fingers are allowed. Think of that. Oh my god, that's amazing. You know what? The Great Mountain Grills does it every time. It does, absolutely.